Hello everyone, this is Yuliana Avdeeva. It is Thursday, 7.30 p.m. in Central Europe, in Munich, in Germany, and I welcome you to our virtual music room, um, where tonight we will be um, officially starting with the, our journey throughout the well-tempered clavier by Johann Sebastian Bach, because today, tonight we are starting with a C major prelude and fugue number one from book one. So this will be the official um, official start of our trip and I'm very much uh, looking forward to it. So tonight um, we will be, yes, we will be taking off with the C major prelude and fugue from book number one. Hello Eric, hi Marcus, hello to Finland, hi Alexis, back to France. Um, and yes, after after the uh, kick off uh, with the C major, uh, I thought to perform for you the D minor fantasy by Mozart tonight because there are some 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 things which I felt somehow related between each other, and I would be very happy to. Um, share it with you. Hello to Poland, hello to Dubai, hi Luca, great to see you here. So um, yes, we start immediately with Bach. Um, I have to be honest, for me it's a wonderful, um, actually a wonderful opportunity to to use this time, this, and I think that's not only, you know, of course, despite the, the times and difficulties where many people are facing and yeah the uh, the restrictions uh, and the life which is now uh, we, we we have to find another way, way to to deal with it but i think it's for me so i'm happy to have this chance to um really dedicate myself to this wonderful music of uh, johann sebastian bach um, hello to Portugal, hi to Taiwan, hello Heng Yu, great to see you. Um, it is really very inspiring and it's, it really keeps my head busy and sometimes I wake up in the night and I have all those voices and all those discoveries I have um, experienced during the day just learn, uh, learning um, uh, the preludes and fugues now and it's really I'm so so glad about that. So. Thank you all for that. Um, hello, Sylvia, to Slovakia. Um, so, what is, um, I, for me, was very interesting to, to learn about was generally the principle of prelude and fugue. So, what is the role um, the, of the prelude? What is the role of the fugue? Hi, Darinka. Um, I think it's, mm, it's the, the the idea of the prelude is very actually very simple and also very interesting. Hi Kyoko, um, and hello to Romania. Hi Ole Olea. Um, the idea of the prelude was actually just a kind of warm up for the performer, but as at the same at the same time it was a um, an opportunity for the performer to tune in the listener, the audience, to the main piece. To the character and to the first of all tonality of the main piece, uh, which was on the program and performed by the uh, by, by the performer, obviously. So basically, the for, uh, the prelude has no real form. So it's a, actually just freestyle fantasy. Fantasy, yes. Um, yeah, probably you will you will recognize why why I'm saying that. Um, so it's just a kind of introduction for the main piece. Uh, uh, which should be performed later. Hello to states. Здравствуйте, Людмила. So it's very um, actually the me meaning of it is very easy. So the basic prelude is very also built very simple. Uh, that's what was the how how the people uh, during Bach's time or even before that was the uh, idea of the prelude. So actually in in this. Um, Prelude is um, indeed very, in, in, a, in a way it is very simple because it's astonishing how Bach manages in this particular prelude uh, really, he basically he's just using this, the, 
just very simple chords. So there is just um, actually in the in the original form of this of the of this prelude, you know, there is a many of the preludes from the book one are uh, already uh, notated by Bach in his Büchlein for his son, uh, Wilhelm Friedemann. Um, but they are actually in a much more, they are written in much more simple, uh, simple way. So some of, the, uh, of those preludes or pieces uh, from this Büchlein for his son, Bach used for the well-tempered clavier. But he, of course, uh, basically he changed them, he revised them, he enlarged them, so it's um, actually finally it's different pieces, but he used already the material he had. And um, the C major prelude is of course something, it's something absolutely unique, I think, because I, uh, how do you see it? For me it isn't really, it's not only the uh, prelude before the C major fugue, I mean it's not just the uh, introduction for the uh, for the C major fugue, but it's also a introduction uh, of the uh, entire cycle. So it is in a way not, but also not only of the entire song. I feel it very strong as a I don't know, like a beginning of the world. So something what is just born, some light which comes out, and at the same time, um, it is also in a way. A kind of discovery, some something very beautiful, beautiful discovery, and and the same, same time it's a kind of embracing the world, the, the entire world. Although there are also very um, also some dark harmonies. So basically, what I'm what I'm saying, right, Eric? I I agree. This is uh, something uh, very. Indeed, very emotional about this this prelude that it is never you can hear it in so many versions, in so many uh, opportunities. But it's it has this pure, unique uh, emotional movement somehow, which which makes the soul somehow uh, move. And this is this is uh, really very very special about it. Hello to Japan. But now I will I will show you what I mean. So basically. When the uh, performers are warming up, they are playing very simple, simple things. So it's chords, and in this prelude, pre uh, prelude is actually built on broken chords. That's what what I uh, what I have um, demonstrated. And in this Büchlein for uh, what I was saying before, that in this Büchlein for um, uh, Wilhelm Friedemann, it's also written like chords. So it's not it's not written like broken chords like we have here but it's just normal uh well, normal normal chords and it is very interesting how Bach just in this movement in this uh, movement uh actually going downstairs going down uh from from this uh, register we're going to our very dark harmonies before the sun is rising and this is really, I don't know, this is something so unique about this this, this um, prelude and it is somehow, it doesn't exist in, it exists in any time, it is not, I, for me it's so relevant also in, in our days and this is a really great piece. So the fugue is something what some some of you were mentioning uh, also in the comments, the fugue is very difficult. Well, it's a, it's a four voices fugue, and there are two versions of this fugue, uh, all uh, originally Bach uh, fugues. Uh, the earlier one sounds like this. So the an ornament is much. Slower, well, it's a, it's a bigger written and it's not so tight as in the in the later version, which is more often played. What is this view for me? Well, it's um, first of all, I think there is a well, it's, it, there is a hidden hidden message in my opinion in this view. So the subject is coming twenty four times within this very actually quite short fugue it's just it's, it's just 27 bars and the subject 
is appearing 24 times. What could that mean? Maybe there is already a statement of Bach uh, about his intention to compose the entire cycle of 24 preludes and fugues. Maybe it's it. Maybe it's something completely different. But anyway, what is very special about this fugue is that it is a very tight fugue. That means that there are no, actually, there are just two bars where no subject is appearing. So it means that the stretto, uh, you might remember we were talking last time, stretto fugue means that when one voice um, follows the other voice with subject without any, um, actually just without any intermission. So it means that the subject in one voice didn't finish and another one and is entering with the subject uh, during the, the, the first one is still appearing with the subject. So it's a very tight manner, it's very intensive, uh, very intensive way of um, expression. So um, I hear in this view definitely a kind of connection with the uh, vocal, well, with the singing, singing voice. Um, this, this is for me, um, this, uh, the, let's say the sound, the, the sound of, um, of, 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 of the fugue. What I particularly like in it is also this um, move, the, the, the entire subject is going upwards. So it's, it's going up. And the, the counter subject is doing the opposite thing, it goes in the opposite direction. But the entire movement is always upwards. So, uh, it, actually, in the Baroque time, the up-going movements were meaning more something like joy, something like um, happiness. And um, in this fugue, the very last bar is also, or the last two bars are very special because this movement uh, is re literally, it is going up. For me, it is going to the heaven. actually reaches here the highest note uh, uh, during uh, the uh, entire piece, which is this higher C. So, um, yes, please share your... I would be interested to hear from you what what is your vision of the C major prelude, because it's... Uh, I said for me probably still the, the, uh, the word I would connect with it in the first is discovery. It is, a, it is a gate which I'm going through in order to discover the world. How do you see it? So now I'm, I'm going to play this number one, credit in C major um, from book one for you.
That was the C major prelude and fugue from book one by Johann Sebastian Bach. Cheers to our project. Cheers. Um, yes, and I'm very happy that you are joining me for that and thank you for inspiring me. So this is, I drink my tea for that. Um, I also would like to thank you very much for your great input about the hashtag for this project, which, uh, which is finally found. And this is the hashtag uh, we're gonna use for this. So it's hashtag Avdeeva Bach project. Um, thank you so much again for your great input for that. This is, um, that really helped me, helped me a lot. Um, yes, cheers and thank you. Yeah, I'm so, yeah, inspired to discover so many things throughout the eight, uh, 48 preludes and fugues. And of course, what I already uh, what I will, what I, of course, probably I knew that before, but now I also realize that um, Bach, of course, within this simple, um, simple prelude and uh, fugue form, the variety of the, of his fantasy, the variety of the, of his creative mind is absolutely, um, it's so amazing because it, every single prelude is different sometimes. The prelude is uh, more in the character of the uh, fugue or really somehow corresponds with it, but sometimes it's completely different, uh, musically different effects, different pe uh, feelings. So I'm very happy to discover this great variety of um, uh, of Bach's, uh, Bach's work. Alexis, yes, you're saying that um, Chopin was saying uh, about the search for uh, simplicity in the um, in the expression. That's absolutely right, and it is somehow. I think it's sometimes it's easier it's easier to come to simplicity after you have gone through the very complicated uh, process. So finally, it is the essence which is left, and. Um, I think it takes some time to get through it and it's necessary to finally recognize the essence of the um, of the expression. Uh, when chance feel embracing the life in deal, indeed I think it's uh, it is something uh, something about being united. It's um, what I think is also very important in our um, in our time is this, yeah, being close to each other, to share the ideals, to share the life and to help each other to keep together also in difficult, in a very difficult times. Uh, hello, Masako to California. So now um, I would like to come to the Mozart fantasy D minor. And actually for me, there is a, somehow, as I started um, to think about what kind of piece I could play together with this uh, prelude and fugue in C major, I thought immediately on Mozart's fantasy. And finally, the fantasy itself actually has more or less the similar purpose. The, the idea purpose, the idea is to, uh, to improvise. The idea is um, just to, um, you know, the, the, the tradition of improvising was very, it is very old and very important um, part of the performance life. And also in the, during the Baroque time, and Bach was also a wonderful improviser. By the way, Bach could improvise also in fugue in six, in six voices. Seriously, this is just unbelievable. Can you imagine that Bach could just sit down and improvise in uh, fugue in six voices? For me, it's really, uh, I don't know how he did it, but... Apparently he could and did it really brilliantly. Uh, well, however, this improvising um, element was very important also during the performances. 
and um, also Mozart. Of course, he was already quite uh, famous also for his perfection in the form uh, in the form of every piece which he conducted. Uh, uh, sorry, conducted, composed, of course. But finally, he was a, a, a wonderful um, performer and improviser. So the improvisation was a, a very important part of his uh, of his performance, and he was. Uh, he didn't know actually fantasy is indeed a notated just a notated improvisation and Mozart unfortunately did not uh, notate so much of them some feeling of his improvising style we find in his uh, slow movements of the piano concertos or in the piano sonatas so this D minor fantasy is actually basically uh, one of the rare cases where we re literally can imagine what kind of uh, improvisation he was uh, he was doing and apparently he was uh, able also to improvise for half an hour sometimes on his own uh, themes sometimes on the themes on of already uh, known colleagues and um, sometimes it, it was actually also uh, the possibility to share the deepest uh, Im expressions of the performer with the audience. Oh, Hiroko is asking whether I improvise. Unfortunately not. Well, I'm, I feel very, actually, as a child, I always dreamed to be able to improvise something, but um, to be honest, I didn't try it since I was probably 11 or 12 years old. I, I, I felt so, so bad that I couldn't do it. Uh, that I think that since then I never even tried to improvise anything, but maybe that's um, uh, maybe this is uh, something what I can try also during this time. Maybe that's something what I could um, what how I could also uh, use the time now just to find out. Maybe I will be able to improvise a little bit. Uh, Jakub is saying that Bach was the first jazzman. In a way, yes, he was. So, um, yeah, it's generally the jazz, the tradition of jazz imp improvisation is actually it's coming from a very old time. It's really, um, it's just so difficult to imagine, but the, it was really normal for the performers to, to improvise. So, um, sometimes Mozart was able to uh, give an improvisation for about also half an hour or something, which might be also... It was just completely different uh, um, approach generally for the performances uh, in that time, and um, I think this prelude. Uh, sorry, what I'm saying. I need to take a, to take a, my tea. I think mm. the fantasy uh, is a kind of combination of different deepest feelings of the of course it's a let's say, let's say it's a chance for the performer to show his skills but also to share the deepest feelings with the audience so in the d minor fantasy um there are so many different types of feelings emotions and character characters um thing no i do not really compose uh, i think you know, there are so many great masterpieces composed before me already that I'm, I'm I just, I think I better perform the great pieces which have been composed before I was, um, yeah, before I was thinking about composing some something by myself. Um, so in the in the D minor, uh, D, D minor fantasy, it's the what is so somehow very was very interesting for me the basic principle is the same like in the prelude so in the beginning it is actually very dark uh, well first of all the d minor is very rare well it's minor tonalities in mozart's work they actually appear very real and mostly it's a symbol of very dramatic or very tragic uh, feeling it's um, it appears of course in d minor uh, requiem uh, also the um, uh, piano concerto number 20 is in d minor but also the famous scene from um, don giovanni commendatore uh, uh, with uh, um, 
this is a very dramatic tonality uh, in Mozart. It has something very something to do with fate for me, and uh, with the with a big, big dark drama. So the beginning is actually again those broken chords as we had them in the in the prelude, but in a completely different arrangement. So. trying out the instrument, uh, getting uh, diving in into the d very dark atmosphere, so it's actually a quite short episode before the main, end, uh, 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 the main theme comes, which is very suffering, rather lamenting. Very simple, but very pure and very sad in a way. Uh, just a couple of bars later, we have completely different episode, which is very. This is fate for me. And here, there is a completely new, new thing, new character begging for mercy. agitated more and more, uh, somehow crying out, uh, very, really very, very uh, uh, dramatic. Then we have those presto passages, which are uh, very, for me, have a connection with uh, recitativo, with uh, speaking quality, so it's show, as what I said about showing the skills, so there are uh, uh, several passages like that. And then suddenly in the bar 55, Something happens. It's something happens which is absolutely. Uh, this is something very unexpected. So it's D major, and there Mozart. Well, he puts Allegro, um, and he puts a um, word which actually very rare uh, appears in his voice, which is dolce, gentle. So it's not for me. It's not a happy. Uh, it's not a contrast in sense of you know uh, that was sad part. This is a happy one. This is something more, something more subtle for me, something like, you know, the first sunshine after a great storm, when you still have this dark uh, cloud somewhere, but it's already some um, signs of hope. So this is... Something which is what is not, 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 not real yet, what you don't believe yet, if it's true or not. Uh, so, the interesting thing and about some mystery about this fantasy is also that uh, it is not, we don't have the entire fantasy uh, manuscript by Mozart. So actually the manuscript ends in the bar uh, 97 after we have... Um, Actually, just a fragment of uh, of the piece, and nobody knows what Mozart was intending to uh, play or compose after that. Maybe it was a uh, introduction for a uh, piano sonata, like the C minor, for instance, C minor fantasy before the C minor sonata. Maybe he he, he thought he would compose a uh, piano sonata after, that. or maybe something completely different. So we don't really know. And the, those last bars we have now, they are probably uh, mm, composed by admirer of Mozart, uh, August Everhard Müller, but basically the original Mozart piece ends with this chord. And I had a wonderful experience um, a couple of years ago um, playing at the uh, Salzburg uh, Festspiele uh, with a great conductor, uh, Konstantinos Kaidis, uh, who suggested um, who proposed this idea of playing this fantasy before the, the last B flat major uh, concerto, 
with orchestra, so the orchestra was sitting on stage, and I played this fantasy until this chord. Any, of course, without any uh, uh, break, uh, we just started the, the piano concerto, and that was absolutely wonderful idea. I like that. It was very, it was indeed in sense of that time. So uh, when I played the fantasy as an introduction for the main piece for the piano concerto. So I will. I'm very happy to play this really very pure, very beautiful. Uh, peace for you now and I hope you will enjoy.
Fantasy by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Um, yes, so this is, um, I think that's also one of the probably most popular or famous pieces for piano by Mozart. So that was actually no, um, uh, I didn't have any intention to play <laughs> the, probably the most um, famous piece by Bach from the Well Tempered Clavier, the C major prelude and the fantasy, but somehow it is, um, it's just, uh, it just happened. So it's, I, I think that there is some, there is this, probably I had a reason why I felt that I would like to, um, to combine these two pieces together. But basically this idea of fantasy, uh, of fantasy of this freestyle, uh, improvising on uh, on piano was of course very popular. Do you have any favorite fantasy pieces? In, I mean, by either composers, do you, what kind of fantasy um, come to your mind? Which is which, which would be maybe your favorite your favorite um, piece? I don't know by any other composer. I I would be very curious about that. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad that you liked it um there are uh, i think that um f of course the fantasy was very popular as a mm, genre during the romantic uh, romantic period and um, many composers did in, indeed compose wonderful pieces uh in this form wanderer fantasy right yes absolutely it is another fantasy, uh, Schumann fantasy, but you see that there is, on all those elements there is indeed, it's not just a, uh, the idea of fantasy is not, um, is not only, it's not without a form, or the, for instance Schumann's fantasy or Wanderer fantasy, it already has this clear, clear sometimes it's a sonata, uh, sonata form already, sometimes it's something something else, but the idea is that the composer somehow feel, I think they just felt more free in it. Indeed, Chopin, of course, Chopin fantasy. Uh, well, Chopin basically, that's something that was really amazing about him, how Chopin, met, how he managed to put this very, it's always a feeling of great freedom when we when we hear Chopin's music. But if once you analyze it also in a form, it is always very classical, the structure is very clear, and it's, it's actually, it feels, so improvised and so free, but the the um, frame uh, by Chopin is always very very classical. Scriabin fantasy, right? It's a wonderful, uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic piece. Of course, the Karl Philipp Emanuel Bach fantasies, because he was also the inspirer for Mozart uh, for his improvisations for his. Um, fantasies right but um yeah i think it's also very somehow it's charming that the um, carl philippe manuel uh, as a son of as a son of um, johann sebastian who was an improviser but in a kind of different different uh form that uh, carl philippe manuel uh, really improved this um improved the uh, improv improvisation in a more modern or let's say more uh, later common um, style. So thank you so much for um, being here. It was a great pleasure to start to tonight with uh, our project with the uh, Well-Tempered Clavier. So next week we go to number two in C minor. And um, next week, uh, it's on, on May 7th, it's a 180th anniversary uh, of one of my favorite Russian composers, Pyotr Tchaikovsky, so he would um, celebrate his birthday at uh, next Thursday at 7.30. Yes, well, we will be <laughs> celebrating his birthday at 7.30, and um, I'm very, very happy to share some music uh, by Tchaikovsky and, uh, of course, to talk to you about, um, about him and his... Um, creative work so please uh, have a good week uh, keep well keep healthy and
Thanks a lot for joining. See you next week. Bye-bye.